Okay, so I want to break down uh, different types of lenses. So with a DSLR, you're going to have the ability to change which lens uh, you use, and each lens kind of has its own strength. Um, so if you remember one of the earliest videos, we went over uh, the parts of a camera. So a DSLR, or a digital single lens reflex, has kind of two main parts. You have a lens, and then you have a camera body, okay? And so lenses on most DSLRs and even some mirrorless cameras uh, are detachable. And so you can swap them out. Uh, and lenses also contain the aperture in it. So you have different aperture capabilities with lenses. Some, ap some lenses are capable of going and opening up very wide to maybe 1.2 apertures. Some uh, lenses ha are capable of closing down really small, maybe like a an f44 something tiny um, and so different lenses have different strengths and so i want to break down kind of the, the four main types of lenses that you'll see um, and obviously there are just tons and tons of lenses you can choose from depending on what your camera model or make is um, and so these are just kind of creating four uh, categories um, the four major categories you'll find lenses in so the first category is a wide lens. And so a wide lens is going to range anywhere from 7 millimeter to 28 millimeter. And so wide lenses are uh, typically have a very wide range of view, just like the name implies. Um, so you're able to get a lot of the view in, but it distorts objects that are close up. Um, so it kind of has a, kind of a distorted look to it. Um, kind of like if you were to look on the inside of a bowl, uh, that is kind of the look that you would get uh, shooting with a wide lens. Um, a, an extreme form of wide lens is known as the fisheye. Um, so a fisheye is basically uh, a large, large range of view. Um, they were pretty popular if anyone was really into the skateboarding scene, uh, videoing, skate videoing scene. Um, fish eyes are really popular. They have a very distorted look to them. Um, but the, the pro is that you can get a lot of the scene into your shot. So the next popular type of lens is called a normal lens. And so a normal lens is anywhere from 35 to 55 millimeter. And the reason we call them normal lenses is because they are uh, the closest match to our field of vision. Okay, so uh, what you see, that field of vision, um, everything to the left and right of you, um, if you were to look straight out in front, that is a normal field of vision, and that would be anywhere from 35 to 55. Um, and so it's a really popular lens to use, uh, especially with anyone who's um, who, who really likes maybe street photography, um, documentary photography, something that has kind of more of a normal look to it, um, that you want a pretty normal field of vision to it, that would be something you'd use a normal lens for. So this third type of lens is going to be called a portrait lens. And so a portrait lens is anywhere from 70 millimeter to 300 millimeter. Um, so a portrait lens, just like the name implies, uh, it is the most flattering for the face. So it's typically used in portraits or studios, um, studio settings. Um, it leaves out distracting backgrounds and it's more comfortable for your subject. It gives you, it gives you a good distance between uh, where the photographer has to stand and the subject has to stand to get the subject within a good portion of the photo. Um, so you're not too close to the person, you're not really far away from the person. Uh, so a portrait lens also have, typically have uh, a pretty good range for the aperture. Um, you're able to get apertures really, really wide, so a small f-stop, um, which would give you a really nice shallow depth of field. And that's really popular with portrait lenses, is separating your subject from your background. And so finally, uh, the last popular type of lens uh, is called a telephoto lens, and that's anywhere from 200 millimeter to 800 millimeter, and nowadays they even go uh, larger than that, you can go 1,000 millimeters. Um, and these are great for any time that you need to get closer than you are physically capable of getting. Um, you'll find these popular in sports, uh, wildlife photography, anything where you need to take a photo of something that you can't get any closer to. 
a telephoto is going to bring you closer. Um, the only thing the telephoto lens is going to um, kind of stack the objects that are far away for you to seem closer to each other. Um, so it's going to give you a really interesting look to your image, uh, but it's going to be able to allow you to get closer uh, when you're not physically able to. All right, so I want it to break down. So just like we went over, uh, these are just kind of common uses for typical lenses. So 25 and less uh, is going to be extreme wide angle architecture, interior. Um, if you're into skateboarding, skate photography. Um, and then you have kind of 40 to 70. Um, that's going to give you a good normal average such snapshots, family photos. And like I said, street photography, documentary photography, uh, even some photojournalism uh, like to use normal lenses. Um, medium telephoto, this is what I would call a portrait lens. It's best for common uses, portraits, photography. Um, and then the telephoto and super telephoto, so wildlife sports, uh, bird photography, just like wildlife. Anytime you need to get closer to a subject that you can't physically get closer to. All right, so this is kind of a, a good example of how close the photographer is to the subject. And like I said, with portrait photography, places you within the perfect distance between the photographer and the subject. And you can see kind of that perfect distance right here with the 85 millimeter and 200. The photographer's not too close, it's not uncomfortable, um, and they're not too far, it's not kind of distant. Um, so you can kind of see with the 16 millimeter how close the photographer is. And then you can kind of see the distortion going on in the photograph. So when the subject is really close, you get kind of a, a distortion around the edges. When the subject is really far, you also get a distortion around the edges. And you can kind of see how it changes in terms of um, the depth of field starts getting shallower as soon as you get start getting further away. Um, so that's another effect of um, longer focal length lenses. All right, so here is a good example of uh, field of vision or angle of vision. Uh, so if you start, let's start with zoomed in. So zoomed in, this is the Sydney Opera House um, in Sydney, Australia. So look how close you are and then watch as you start getting further and further or shorter and shorter focal lengths. Uh, look how far away you get from your subject. So you go down to 35, and you go 28, and you can go down to that super wide kind of fish-eyed. You can hardly even see, you'd have to zoom in really close, you'd hardly even see the Sydney Opera House. Uh, so just the difference in focal lengths to your scene. You really need to think ahead, uh, what effect do you want to get in your image? Do you want to show more of the scene? Do you want to show more of your subject? So it's something to think about when choosing uh, a lens. All right.